Hey y'all, I'm just here having, you know, a typical Saturday night. So I actually ended up doing a Twitter poll earlier today because I had finished the book I was reading and I wanted to, you know, start another one and I was like, why don't I ask Twitter? So I asked if I should reread an old fave or read a thriller arc or a romance arc and y'all chose the romance arc because we all sluts out here. So the romance arc is called The Friend Zone by Soraya Wilson. There's another romance book coming out called The Friend Zone and sadly I was declined for that one. This this one I just kind of requested on NetGalley sort of at random because I was like, oh, this kind of seems interesting. It's about a football player who was kicked out of his university for getting into like a bar fight, I think it said. And so now he's going to this community college playing for this team that they call like the end of the line, basically players who messed up their shots get recruited by this coach who is like, okay, I got some strict rules, y'all. You ain't gonna be disrespectful. You ain't gonna be cussing. You ain't gonna be drinking. You ain't gonna be having having girlfriends. And so they basically have to follow all these rules or they'll be kicked off the team, lose their scholarship, and probably not continue at the college they're at because they won't be playing football or whatever. So our main protagonist is Logan, who is very good at football, but you know, got kicked out, like I said. And then the other protagonist is Jess, which is the coach's daughter. She is starting to tutor Logan because she's super good at math. And of course, they're both like, ooh, she hot, ooh, he hot, yet they can't date because the rules. That just like sounded really interesting to me and like I was like, let's go for it. I have to say so far, I'm not loving it. I'm only 10% in, so what can I really say? But the writing so far is just not my thing. It's kind of like cheesy, but also kind of cringy in a content matter wise. Like there's already been like girls comparing it, like fighting with girls and be like, oh, her fake boobs and her Botox, blah, blah, blah. Like fucking hate that shit. And we get the different perspectives, Logan and Jess's. And in the first one where we see Logan, Jess is very like, calling him on his bullshit, all this shit. I'm like, okay. But then we get to Jess's point of view and she's like, oh, I had to try to say all that stuff because he's just so hot. Oh my God. I don't know if I'm gonna finish this one. I'm gonna read a little bit more of it and we'll see. But if I'm not enjoying it, I'm just gonna DNF because I'm not gonna waste my time in 2019. No, sir. Hi friends. I thought while I look so beautiful, I would film a little update. I actually don't have a reading update because I haven't read any more of that one romance book that I started, nor have I started anything else. So love that for me. Yesterday though, I took a lot of footage because it was Bindi's birthday, but I never took a moment to actually sit down and like explain what the heck was going on. So basically I started out the day by making her some white chocolate pumpkin spice snickerdoodles. I decided to go with these cookies instead of the pup cakes that I made in my last vlog as a trial run because while she liked it, I don't know how much she loved it. And also we're not sure if it gave her diarrhea because just about everything gives her diarrhea, but you know, it might've been the pup cake so we canceled those and I already knew she liked these cookies so here's footage of me doing that So while the cookies had to go in the refrigerator, I went to the dollar store, got a candle, got these birthday tiaras that she's gonna hate and not wear, but I'm gonna get at least one picture of her in it. And I got her a little balloon, it says happy birthday.
So I made these a little bigger than they're supposed to be because I just wanted to get them done. And I made this one extra big because it's going to be like Bindi's birthday cookie. But it combined with these two and it kind of looks like a wompy dog. Like there's the face and there's the ears. So I'm just going to keep these together and that will be her little birthday cookie. Then after I made her the cookies, I made her a pepperoni pizza, which I actually have a video that I dedicated entirely to doing that. So if you want to see that process, I'll link it down below. That was filmed before a lot of the subscribers that I have now got here, I think. So if you haven't seen it, basically pepperonis are her favorite treat in the world. So I made her a pizza one, you know? Miss Bean, are you five years old today? Yes, yes you are. It is your birthday and I made you cookies and your pizza is in the oven. You are so spoiled. I don't know if you deserve it, but I did it. Miss Bindi, do you smell your pizza cooking? She keeps running around the kitchen with her nose in the air. It's so cute. I didn't hide any this time. It's not like the eggs. It's not hidden anywhere. It's not in the garbage. She thinks because I have the camera and she just smells it in the air that I hid them. But no, it's in the oven. It's cooking. It's in there. That's where it is. It'll be done soon. But you gotta wait. You gotta wait till it's done cooking. The crust got a little messed up because when I was taking it off the parchment paper to the pan, it completely stuck because I'm a dumbass and didn't like flour or whatever. But I think it still turned out pretty good. Bindi is freaking going nuts over here. She's just like waiting for me. You want the goods, huh? So I just got a bunch of pictures of her in her birthday crown. She's actually sitting here wearing it for me. I think it's only because she knows I have something special to give her and she wants to, you know, make sure she gets it. So she's being extra good girl. Are you eating your pepperoni pizza? Are you eating your pepperoni pizza? Mostly the pepperonis, but you know, I think you'll get to the pizza part. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Do you know how to blow out your candles? <laughs> Yay! Yay! Happy wow. birthday, baby! Okay, you gonna get your presents? What's in there? What's in there? Oh, oh, what's in there? Oh, oh. Choo -choo oh. What's this? Oh. Little choo choo bones! <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> Yes, it's a big, it's as big as you. Yeah, it's, you're already trying to tear it up. Love that. <laughs> Literally side by side shot, it's like as big as her. This is so funny. <laughs> Taking Bindi for a walk. It is your birthday and you deserve it. And because I'm the most obnoxious person in the world, I tied her balloon to her harness. So the whole world shall know it is Bindi's birthday. We gotta let the whole world know. Um, is Bindi. I think that's all the explaining I have to do concerning her birthday. And then it was an eventful Monday night because next door, like, oh, not like next door as in like my neighbors that are immediately here, but like across the fence, you know, whatever. A fire started in one of their bathrooms. So there was like a bunch of fire trucks and stuff. I think I got a little clip. Oh, I, I was in bed at the time when this happened. I was like, I'm wait, no. Are you Monday night. So that was crazy. And then, why did I not spend the rest of the night reading? Well, friends, I ended up applying for two different copywriting positions that are completely remote, so I can do them from my bedroom. Do I think I'll get them? No, because I'm sure there's so many applicants and people with like more experience and stuff. But you know, I'm shooting my shot. Wish me luck. So I'm going to try do some reading now. Hopefully, that romance book it gets better. If not, I think I'm just gonna DNF and then move on. My audiobook for Big Little Lies came in today. So I might start that as well because my room definitely needs a cleaning. Yeah, thank you uh, for this clip. Sorry if it was like a little muffled because I don't I don't freaking know how I sound with this. Also, the last time I did a face mask, I vlogged that and I really turned into Tony the tomato. Like my skin said no, ho, 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 as they do with most face masks. I pretty much don't use them unless they're the sheet ones because I feel like I handle those a little better. The last time I was a burning mess. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. Wish me luck. 
I got chips and salsa, a pizza puff, because my mom was like, here, take it. My Oreos are over here. The last sleeve. Let's see what a shit fest this series finale is. Oh, I'm so tired of where Game of Thrones has gone. The last time we get to hear this theme song. Hey, hi, hello, your crusty bench is back. I've just been in the mood lately to just sit around and do nothing. Not exactly even in the mood, it's just that I think of doing things, but then I don't do them. I just sit there and think about doing them. But first of all, the Game of Thrones finale. Sucked. Am I surprised after this season? No. Am I still disappointed? Hell yeah. I'm just going to pretend that things ended differently. So I attempted to read more of that romance book that I was reading, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Sis is not enjoying it. Sis has no motivation to pick it up. So I think I just have to DNF it and be good with myself. I did, however, start and finish the audiobook for Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I think I'm going to give this like a four or 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I don't know what this is like advertised as if it's a thriller or just a mystery I would say more mystery because it's very relaxed and it goes into the details of just these people who have these suburban lives and the secrets that they keep or the the lies they tell <laughs> This follows, I think, about three different women. They all have kids going to this. I don't know if it's like a private school or just like a really like fancy, we feel better about sending our children to this school kind of school. They're trying to fit into this social structure where everyone looks perfect. Everyone seems like they have like the perfect life. But slowly as we read more about them, we see the flaws. And it was just really good at keeping you interested in these sort of mundane circumstances until you come invested in to these women's lives and you start to find out more and more and everything just begins to unravel. Basically, through the whole thing, there's this trivia night at the school that the parents go to and someone ends up dead. You don't find out who that is until the end, but throughout, there's little like snippets of interviews with different parents that were at the trivia night, giving their takes on kind of what happened, but mostly like the little things that led up to it. And I just really, really enjoyed it. There's this scene at the end that I can't obviously talk about because spoilers but the way it came together oh this was like a four star book and then I was like ooh no so it's gotta be 4.5. I just really loved the different depictions of women. I love how it showed the almost political nature of this little suburban area. I think it's in Australia that this book is based. And I just quite enjoyed it. So if you haven't gotten to this one, I would recommend. Now I can finally watch the TV show before the second season comes out and I'm so excited. So I think today I'm going to try to start a new book. Normally Edelweiss just hates me and slams me with them decline emails, but I was very surprised to see that I was accepted for Ruth Ware's new book, The Turn of the Key. She is a very popular thriller author. I haven't read any of her books before, but I requested it just because I do know she is one of the big ones in the genre, and I thought it would be a cool way to be introduced into her books. So I am going to try to start that three days later. If you're wondering what kind of person I am when it comes to spontaneity, my brand is deciding to go to a movie that starts in 15 minutes. <laughs> I know, I'm so wild. I'm crazy. Also, I look like I just rolled out of bed or something. That's the look today. No makeup. We don't care. We're gonna sit in the dark and we're gonna watch Booksmart, which I don't actually know what it's about, but I just heard really great things. So I just got home from the movie. It was great. Go see Booksmart. I highly recommend it. I came home and there's a package. I did not order this. My mom is claiming that I did, but I did not. I don't know what it is. It's from Book Depository. So let's open it. Yeah, I'm gonna need more bread. Who sent me this? This is Heartstopper, which is a graphic novel by Alice Oseman. I don't really know much about it, but I heard it was really cute. I think Whitney liked it, so honestly, she probably sent this. Update, this was actually sent by my lovely Canadian friend, Sasha. She doesn't have like a booktube, but I will link her Twitter down below and on the screen, it's like Sasha Herondel, I believe. So thank you, Sasha. I am so lucky to have you as a friend. You're lovely. I love you. So yeah, go follow her on Twitter. She has great tweets. She like, you know, it's like book, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I can't wait to read this. <laughs> So 
I'm a sweaty mess because I just got back from taking my dog for a walk. But as I was going for this walk, I got a Tinder update that was like, Frank sent you a message. Now, if you haven't watched my last video, you're probably like, why are you telling us this? My last video was sorting Tinder guys into Hogwarts houses. Ooh. And I, ooh. Can we focus on me? Hello? Hello? So basically I read their bios, I predicted their Hogwarts house, and then I would go on to message them if I matched and, you know, see if I was right. When I finished the video and uploaded it, Frank had not responded, like a loser. But now I got a message from him, so I thought I would do a live update. In my video, I guess that he was a slither and I just had to rewatch it because I literally didn't remember. Like this dude is messaging me almost a month after we matched. Uh, so let's see what this guy has to say. Hopefully my camera's okay. She seems to like not be wanting to film me and like, I understand, I'm ugly. I wouldn't want to look at me either. Frank said he's in Gryffindor. Didn't even come close to the right spelling though. So once again, I was wrong. <coughs> anyway, I needed to come on here and film a clip because I have not been vlogging and I haven't really been reading lately. I just feel like I've been very off kilter lately and I don't know, things have been weird. But today I kind of, I kind of righted things. So hopefully it's going on straight. I need to end this vlog though because it needs to go up and I've, it's been like two weeks or something but first i need to talk about a book that i did actually manage to finish which is the turn of the key by ruth ware which i have an arc of thanks otherwise that's like a very rare acceptance for me so the turn of the key follows this nanny or child care worker who sees an ad online for this family that needs a nanny and they're paying like a crazy amount of money and they live in this smart home basically because the parents are architects and they designed this like crazy cool house but it's also not kind of cool because I mean if you've seen the movie Smart House I can be everything you need Ben You know shit can go bad There's also rumors that it is haunted and just a basically a bunch of weird stuff but you know our girls like i could use that money at the very beginning of the novel though we already know how it ends we know that a child a child has ended up dead and she is accused of killing them so the whole book is the nanny character's letter to this famous attorney who she wants to represent her and so the whole letter just details her time being the nanny for this family, all the bullshit that happens, and you're left wondering what's exactly going on, as in most thrillers. I think this one was pretty intriguing at the beginning of the novel just because you're learning about this weird house, all of its crazy tics, all these features that you're like, in an ideal world, I guess would be cool, but also something should just not be technology-based, but this house has a lot of bullshit. And so that really sucked me in in the beginning, but I think the middle dragged a little just because I felt that there wasn't a lot of like twists that would, there wasn't really any twist until the very end where you find out everything. But until then you don't really, you aren't really thrown a line about potential possibilities, which I think most thrillers do because half of the fun of reading a thriller, at least for me, is trying to guess the ending and like figuring out what it could be. And when the ending came, I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And obviously there's little hints that you could see now that you know it, but like reading it, I don't feel like there's like a way that would like lead you to that explanation. I don't know. I just felt like there needed to be something more happening in the middle of this to give us, just to give us a little nibble at something, some new crazy twist or something. I just didn't really feel like there was one. I did enjoy the ending. Like I thought it was like a cool way to wrap things up, but I didn't like where it ended. To me, it was a little abrupt, I guess. I kind of wish we knew more of what happened after that point. But overall, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't great. So I'm giving this one three stars. Again, this comes out in August if you are interested. Okay. So, I'm going to end this vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!